Supposed Bible Contradiction Matthew's Genealogy versus Luke's Genealogy In the different Gospels of Matthew and Luke, we are given the genealogies of Joseph, the adoptive father of Christ. However, they differ on who the father in line of Joseph was. Matthew says Jacob was the father of Joseph and has a line going back to Abraham, but Luke says Heli is the father of Joseph and has a line going back to Adam. These are not different names of the same people, they are completely different genealogies. So do we have a contradiction? Not so fast. There are two ways of handling this. The first and most common argument is the genealogy of Luke was Mary's line. Heli was the father of Mary, who became the father-in-law of Joseph, thus making Joseph his son as well. This would be consistent with the idea that some scholars have suggested, that Luke used a relative of Mary's side of the family as a source for his birth narrative, so he would have taken that genealogy instead. And since there is no Greek word for son-in-law, Joseph is simply called the son of Heli. That is perfectly acceptable by most scholars, as there is no indication Mary had any brothers, but only a sister. Thus, if there were no sons of Heli, Joseph would become the legal heir to Heli's inheritance, thus his heir by law. This would also make sense with the fact that Mary wed within the family of David to ensure Heli's inheritance remained among those of the same household, which is in accordance with the laws of Numbers 36, 1 through 12. However, there is another possible explanation that was given to us by the early church historian Eusebius. He argues from an epistle by Africanus that both lines were of Joseph, one legal and one biological. In Book 1 of Ecclesiastical History, he writes, Heli and Jacob were thus uterine brothers. Heli having died childless, Jacob raised up seed to him, begetting Joseph, his own son by nature, but by law the son of Heli. Thus Joseph was the son of both, thus far Africanus. So what is he saying? Well, according to the law of Deuteronomy 25, 5-6, if two brothers dwell together and one dies childless, his brother is to take his widow as his wife, and the first son born to them shall be his brother's legal heir, so that his name shall not be blotted out of Israel. So basically, if a man dies childless, his widow is to marry his living brother, and the first son born to them will carry on the name of the deceased husband, even though the living brother is the biological father. Thus, the child legally is to be the son of the dead brother. If this is what happened, it means Matthew is correct when he says Jacob begot Joseph, while Luke is correct when he records he was the son of Heli. And Eusebius refers to Africanus, who points out that in the Greek, it says Jacob fathered or begot Joseph, whereas Luke says who Joseph was the son of. But isn't the father of Jacob Methan and the father of Heli Methat? Well, yes, but remember, Eusebius records that Jacob and Heli were half-brothers of the same mother. So to give a visual, this means Methan married a woman and had Jacob, but later died. So since he already had a son to carry on his name, his widow was free to remarry whoever, and thus she married Methat, with a different genealogy of that of her first son Jacob, and then she bore Heli. Therefore Jacob and Heli were half-brothers by the same mother. When they grew up, Heli married a woman, but died childless, and then Jacob became her husband, fulfilling the law of Deuteronomy 25.5, and the first son born to them was Joseph, who became the legal son of Heli, but by nature the son of Jacob. Thus Jacob fathered Joseph, but legally was the son of Heli, and neither genealogy makes an error in what it records. Jacob begot Joseph, but Joseph was the son of Heli. So there are two completely cogent ways to resolve this supposed contradiction, and since both are entirely possible, this Bible contradiction can be addressed and resolved.